Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, coming to you from Washington's nicest indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Uh, listen, we're going to talk briefly about the terrible, terrible events which occurred in Lewiston, Maine earlier this week. And one of the things that we know every time there is one of these horrific incidents is that, of course, uh, all of those who are advanced for civilian disarmament come out and start screaming bloody murder that this is the opportunity we need to do something. Now, what also is always examined is the state in which this occurs, they start examining the state laws. And what's being uh, highly, uh, highly criticized right now is the fact that Maine does not have a red flag law. But does that mean they don't have anything? No, actually, they have something that I really want to talk to you about because I think it's a much better model. And I think there's two lessons to be learned here. One is how we can probably more appropriately deal with people who are clearly going through some type of a mental situation and should not be in possession of firearms. And also, why no matter how good we write a law, they oftentimes don't work. So today, Let's spend a few minutes, let's get real, let's be objective, and let's talk about Maine's yellow flag laws and why they didn't work. Okay, so sensitive topic, and this is really the first time that we've ever addressed an incident such as this. Uh, there was a horrific mass shooting that occurred earlier this week in Lewiston, Maine. Now, Maine is a state that ranks about middle of the road, according to Giffords, as it relates to gun laws. But when you take a look at the gun violence numbers in Maine prior to this incident, they are a state that actually is one of the safest states in the country. What we also know, and this has been verified now through multiple media sources, is that the shooter in this case, who is a former firearms instructor, had been suffering from all sorts of mental health issues, rather obvious signs. There had been really, really odd behavior. He had been admitting that he was hearing voices. He had made threats, made threats already to shoot up a National Guard base and then was involuntarily committed to a mental health institution for the duration of two weeks. Now, most frequently, involuntary mental health commitments will last only about 72 hours. So for a person to be committed and then kept there for two weeks, that typically signifies that there was some kind of a rather significant issue that needed some much more long-term care. Now under 18 USC section 922 G4, at the point that this person was committed to a mental health institution, they were in fact disqualified under federal law from being in possession of any firearm. So once again, we have an incident in which an individual was unlawfully possessing the firearm at the time that this horrific crime was committed. Now, what a lot of people have been very critical of on the state of Maine is that the state of Maine does not have red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders. Now, we're not going to get into the legitimacies of it and the complexities of it, but we have done enough videos on this channel so for those of you who want to see where we come down on red flag laws, there is a multitude of videos out here that will help you determine that. What I do want people to understand though, it's not like the state of Maine hasn't done anything. As a matter of fact, the state of Maine in as recently as 2019 did debate having uh, implementing red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders. And in a compromise, the state legislature instead passed what's called yellow flag orders. Now, I want to explain to you what the difference is between a red flag order and a yellow flag order as they do it in the state of Maine. Now, under a normal red flag order, the allegation that is, hey, we need to take this person's firearms can be made by multitudes of individuals. It can be law enforcement, it could be family members, it could be household members. And many states are actually expanding the list of potential petitioners to include all sorts of health professionals, counselors, marriage counselors, neighbors, other acquaintances and things like that. So once an individual on a red flag order then petitions the court and says, hey, this person needs to have their firearms taken. What the court will do is hold an ex parte hearing where they're here only from one side. And if they determine by preponderance of evidence only that the individual poses a threat to themselves or others, they will order um, surrender of the firearms and law enforcement will go execute that order almost instantaneously. Now we talked about some of the dangers of it as it relates to some folks in Michigan on this video right here and you should check that out. 
Once then the individual is stripped of their firearm rights, they will be given an opportunity to be heard later at a full-blown hearing, but that really is not a very meaningful opportunity since it pretty much just pertains everyone sliding in declarations and going just on what the paper says. And I can assure you as being a trial lawyer for over 20 years now, it is very difficult to cross-examine a piece of paper. If the red flag order is granted, again, only on preponderance of evidence standards, well, then the individual is stripped of their firearm rights in Washington State for at least a year. Now, in Maine, this is how it works. First of all, a petition for a yellow flag order can only be made by law enforcement. Now, I think you're going to probably see the Maine State Legislature significantly alter that the next time they're back in session. But just because it can only be made by a law enforcement officer, does not mean, in fact, that it has to be observed by law enforcement. There are thousands, millions of crimes that are charged every year where law enforcement does not see the activity, but other people did witness the activity and can attest to it and help in the investigation of that. So in this situation where you have an individual who has been involuntarily committed, who is making threats to shoot places up, who is hearing voices and all sorts of odd behavior, there was an opportunity for hundreds of people to contact local law enforcement and say, hey, I'm a little concerned about this. And anybody who had any knowledge of this gentleman would have also known that as a firearms instructor, he was probably in possession of a large quantity of firearms and obviously was rather proficient in their use. Now, the other good thing about Maine's yellow flag laws is, is that once the court determines that there is a preponderance of evidence to believe that this might have some merit, rather than strip the individual of their firearm rights, what the court instead does is appoint an independent mental health professional to conduct an evaluation of that individual. At that point, after that evaluation is done, that is also submitted as evidence and both sides are also entitled to offer any other additional evidence based upon mental health or other issues that may be relevant to that order. And then, and then to top it all off, they will have a full blown evidentiary hearing, which both sides get to cross examine and the burden of proof that must be established before you can strip firearm rights from an individual is clear and convincing evidence rather than preponderance. So a significantly higher burden of proof for the government to establish. Now, am I saying that Maine's figured it out and this is exactly right? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, is that we clearly have a problem in this country with certain individuals being in possession of firearms who have no business being in possession of them. We have a duty as society to try to protect each other and ourselves. So we understand why there is a purpose for something like a red flag law. And I've always said that I truly believe that those who design red flag laws for the most part had their hearts in the right place. It's when we start applying them procedurally and constitutionally that it completely falls apart and becomes a complete aberration of what one's due process rights should be. The bigger issue here though, the bigger issue is it does not matter how good of a law you write to prevent something like this when no one is willing to step in, when no one is willing to actually implement the law, when no one is willing to actually put into action the safeties and the safeguards that were placed there by the legislature, well, you can keep writing laws, but until you enforce them, well, they just simply don't work. So yeah, I'm gonna be very interested to see what happens with the Maine State Legislature and what they do with their yellow flag law. I would hate hate to see them start depriving individuals of due process because this is a state that actually took into account the individual's due process rights. I would hate to see them sacrifice that to expedite some political agenda. The opportunity to prevent some of these incidents are there. There are enough people you go back and you take a look at many of these other horrific incidents. There are enough people in these individuals' lives that were aware of the problems that could have done something about it. It does not matter how many laws you write, but until someone is willing to step in and do something about it, they will not work. Listen, we'll keep you posted about this and any other developments on what has proven to be an absolutely horrific story 
In the meantime, if you got any questions about this or anything else related to what we talk about here all the time, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.